urban agriculture has that uh, fluid nature that your product is not just food, your product is community and um, urban greening. So when, we, when we're able to put in um, small um, urban agriculture projects throughout Oakland, we're able to build community within neighborhoods um, and really provide some of that social glue that's been broken away through, you know, redlining, police brutality. Urban agriculture is uh, a really effective way to connect youth to, um, to building their own solutions to the ecological crisis. It empowers neighbors to, to look at themselves. It empowers neighbors to grow their own food. It empowers neighbors to look at their own health. It empowers, it empowers the community to be a real community. There's no, there's no better kind of community project where you build something together, you get to harvest together, you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Together. Engaging community and neighbors, um, residents, young people, elders, um, in, in understanding like what the possibility is for them to do, whether it's you know in their in their backyard or um, you know in their kitchen someplace. Um, if there's an opportunity for them to you know feel secure, um, to feel healthy. Um, and, and, and have, you know, grow the food that they want. We're able to feed our kids and feed ourselves in ways that are culturally relevant to us, that are, you know, spiritually and emotionally uh, filling, fulfilling for us, and that are politically empowering for us. Um, the more we do that, the less we rely on inadequate and harmful systems to take care of us. It's powerful to be able to say, I don't want my food to come from 500 miles away. I don't want my food to be sprayed um, with different chemicals that are supposedly cancerous and that can cause reproductive damage and a slew of different health problems. I don't want any of those. But then to be able to say, and I'm not going to use those because I have a different solution. I'm gonna get my food locally from within a block or within 10 miles and I'm gonna eat food that I approve of and that feels good to me and that I know feels good to the earth is really powerful. I think a lot of people are waking up to the fact that we actually have the power and the knowledge and the skill amongst our, our own communities, our own neighbors, to really provide the things that we need to be healthy, happy human beings. And first and foremost among those is, you know, a, a good, healthy diet. You know, when we harvest carrots and they taste the difference between those and the packaged carrots, that, you know, it's like candy to them. And, and that's always, always good to be able to introduce sweet, healthy vegetables to Just a giant monoculture of, of turf grass is not particularly ecologically sound. So having you know, the biodiversity, the crop diversity, the plant diversity that comes with uh, an urban garden is actually increasing that overall um, sustainability of the site. So a lot of the problems that we see in Oakland, like food deserts or job deserts that are talked about a lot, are really linked to larger structural inequalities. We want to make sure that as we're bringing in healthy food options and greening Oakland that we're doing it for the people who are here and addressing some of those root causes. In Oakland, you know, there really isn't a grocery store around here, you know, so like, like why not come to Dover Street Park, you know, where we, where we have fresh greens, you know, fresh produce, you know, and just, you don't have to pay, all you gotta just come out here, lend a helping hand and just at the end of the day, harvest, take home as much as you want. It's important that we reclaim public spaces to grow food in them, to make art in them, to create space and experiences that nourish, inspire, nurture, motivate, and fuel our people to do what they came to do, to be a force of love. I think if we make the updates to the regulation that we're talking about right now, um, you'll see the, the momentum that's already gathered around urban agriculture here in Oakland really take off. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are already um, trying to figure out how they can sort of, you know, fit what they're dreaming about into the current regulations, and I think you'll see a real, um, I think you'll see a lot of activity around um, not only backyard gardens, but I think you'll see a lot of sort of micro-businesses start to spring up. Um, 
micro entrepreneurs have made this neighborhood eco center possible because they want the community to be able to eat locally but sustain themselves economically and sustain their environments. Urban agriculture is not just about the foodies, right? We all eat and so we all need to understand our relationship to food, which is an important part of climate, an essential part basically of surviving on this planet. Urban agriculture is a critical part of Oakland's energy and climate action plan. Growing our own food improves our urban environment by absorbing pollution and fighting greenhouse gases. It's really important for us to push forward on these policy changes so that we can, there's more land, you know what I'm saying, that we can use to make more community gardens, you know, so that we can, you know, move forward as a people when it comes to our food. So this is just an incredible time for the urban ag movement here in Oakland. There are people from food justice, from climate change activists, to urban gardeners, to policy advocates, to educators, who are all coming together to see how we can transform our city into a place where people can grow, sell, harvest, and share food with one another. And we're excited to be part of that. Bay Local Lives is working to bring about policy changes in Oakland that really reflect the resources we have in our community, which is the people. We're really trying to acknowledge and reflect that kind of diversity of perspectives by bringing about these coalitions to demand the policy for the future food system that Oakland deserves.